Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service today. Um, today is the third Sunday of term of Trinity. Um, as you, as you, so you remember, today we were meant to have the, the, um, the inside committee, but they have cancelled a few weeks back to say that they won't be able to make it because they have other things on this weekend. And so we are here to worship and to praise God. And um, uh, it's a beautiful day. So do be cool. I don't know if you can. It's, 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 um, it's hot in the Tenerife, basically. Um, so we don't need to go there. We can stay here. <laughs> Let's pray as we start this up. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love for the grace you have granted us to be here again in your presence with your people to offer you praise, worship, adoration, honor, and glory. As so Lord, we pray for our time together. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be with us, to empower us, to fit us, to inspire us, to change us, so that our lives will be transformed through our time together today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Desire for all 
generations. Praise the Lord. Let us trust him and praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And it comes after a song, the servants of God. Let us therefore confess our sins. Father eternal, give us the light of the great truth. Yes, in the name of you, and against our neighbor, in what you have thought, in what you have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and harmed your image in us. We are so 
He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there, any there, he belonged to the way where the men or women he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus, on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, So, so, why did you persecute? Who are you, Lord? So asked. I am Jesus, who you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go to the, into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men trembling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see he could not see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. He did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias, yes Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Strange Street and ask for a man from Tarsus next door, for he is praying. In the vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. He has come and he has come here with the authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell off from Saul's Saul eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we come to our collective special prayer. Almighty God, you have broken in the tyranny of sin, and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you in Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we in all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God.
gospel reading is from Mark, chapter Mark, chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52. Hear the gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord. Please take a seat. We are going to dismiss our children. I think they will now. Let's pray for them as they go. Our Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you, Lord, that you have given them to us. And we pray that you will give us grace to fulfill the calling that you have placed on our lives to care and protect them and teach them in your ways. So we pray for them now, and their teachers, that as they know your spirit will go with them, that their hearts will receive your truth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Conversion in Acts chapter 9 that was read earlier. But 
as we look at Mark's gospel, before I get to talking about blind Bartimaeus, we want to, of course, ask the question that we must ask every time, what is the gospel? What is, what is the gospel? These, these four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are called gospels. And so, what is it that is unique about these books that, that um, warrant the name Gospels. Of course, this is because they focus on the life story of Jesus Christ. These four books are looking at Jesus from four different angles. And, and so even though they all present Christ from four different perspectives, what is common is that they are all about Jesus Christ. The gospel, therefore, is about Jesus Christ. In fact, more than that, the gospel is Christ. The gospel is Jesus Christ. The word gospel means good news. Um, good news, you know, everyone wants to hear good news. We always want to hear good news, don't we? Nobody likes bad news. When we turn on the, uh, the news, uh, it's 90% of it is bad news. Most of it is not good news. Um, you know, the law reports are good news. It doesn't lead the evening to the news at 6 o'clock. It's usually bad news. And, and we, 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 you know, somebody oh, at the conference this week, we were talking in conversation, and somebody said, um, you know, I just don't watch the news, it's just too depressing. And, and yeah, and I can understand that you want to um, shield yourself from the bad news. But uh, I don't know if that's the best way to go. <laughs> um, it, it's there. I might as well deal with it. But, um, but, but we don't like it. Our hearts yearn for good news. Hence, the message of Christianity is good news. It is good news. It's good news for the world. It's good news for our lives. It's news that we need for our life. It's the news that we need to sustain us. It's, it's not just any old good news, of course. It's not, it's not lifestyle news. It's not news about fashion and, and, and makeup and that sort of thing. It's not that kind of news. It's not news about dieting. And so that's not the kind of news this is. That is, that's not, that may be good news, but it's not news as such, is it? This is the good news, the good news, the good news that you need for life and eternity. It's not just news for today, it's news for tomorrow and news forever. This is news that's, that, you know, you know there are, there are, there are things that, that happen in our world. This, today, the news might be one thing. Tomorrow, it's a completely different thing. Not that that other thing is not happening. You know, a few, um, a few weeks ago, probably a month ago, maybe two months ago, there was an earthquake in Turkey and Syria. That was bad news. No. We don't hear much about it, but that's still bad news. <laughs> it's, it is still horrible, and those people are still suffering as a result of those earthquakes. But nobody knows, because you don't hear it. Other things are taking over. Other issues, the interest rates going up, um, you, you know, um, issues uh, with Trump in America, and all these, these things have taken over the news, and every day the news changes. But the good news of Christianity never changes. It is forever relevant. It is forever at the front of the bullity of our lives. Now, of course, it's not always because we don't hear about this news either any more than we do others. At the conference this week, we're talking about, and one of the things that was talked about, the fact that the good news of Jesus was launched uh, in uh, 33 AD with the coming of the Holy Spirit upon 
the church. And it has, it has permeated the world in the last 2,000 years. And, it's, and, and, and the, the conference is about ch challenging us to carry on that good news to the far reaches of the world. It's a decade of preaching the gospel, preaching the good news, telling others about the good news. So, Jesus, Jesus, according to the gospel records, comes into the bad news of people's lives and transform that bad news into good news. So as you read through the gospel, you'll find lots of bad news. But as Jesus enters that their lives, the bad is changed into good. He meets sick people and he heals them. Bad situation turned into good news. He meets dead people and he raises them from the dead. Bad situation turned into good news. And so, and he meets he meets people who are ostracized from society, and he restored them to communion and to relationship. Bad news. Turn into good news. Every encounter with Jesus transformed the bad news of people's lives into good news. And so Jesus is the bearer of good news. Jesus embodies good news. The Gospels portray a man who goes about demonstrating good in the lives of people who lack goodness. And uh, in fact, as in Acts we are told, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by Now why did Jesus do so many good things for individuals who never deserved such goodness? You know, Jesus never once said to them, do you deserve to be healed? Do you deserve this? Now he healed them. Now I've said many times here that the miracles of Jesus serve a number of purposes in the Gospels. First, they are active parables. And I, you know, I, one of the things you need to think about when you read the, the miracles of Jesus is that they are stories in active, in in demonstration. The parables, of course, are the stories that Jesus told about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like this, says Jesus. That's how he would tell a story. But the miracles that he did in the life of, of, of various people who we met were, were a demonstration of what the kingdom of God is like. Now, he doesn't just teach us what the kingdom of God is like. He shows us what the kingdom of God is like. And so therefore, the kingdom of God is the rule, the reign, the government of God. And, and, and that kingdom, says Jesus, is changing the world one soul at a time. It is a transformation of individuals from darkness to light. One person at a time. In fact, the conference I was at this week, the emphasis there is on everyone reaching one. It's an evangelism conference. The whole idea is that every one of us are charged with the commission to tell one other person. And the, and the, the challenge, the, the charge was that we should have at least five people in our circle, who we are praying for, who we are, who we can share the good news with. And the challenge is to do this for the next 10 years. Stick with it. Don't give up. Don't allow apathy to take over. The good news of Jesus is for everyone. And Jesus showed this in demonstration, in the acts of miracles that he did. 
whatever he went about doing good. So the miracles of Jesus are showing us that the kingdom of God does not have sin, sickness, or any brokenness in it. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of complete wholeness in body, soul, and spirit. That's the kingdom of God. Of course, we don't have the fullness of that kingdom yet, but we can always taste it. We can always have a glimpse of it. And, and that's what the miracles did. The miracles gave individual people in the brokenness of their lives a taste of that kingdom. You know, everybody who Jesus healed died eventually. Everyone who we raised from the dead eventually died again. Lazarus died again. As much as he came back to life, he died again. And the widow of their son died again. I mean, they all. The point is, that wasn't the fullness of the kingdom. That was a glimpse. That was a, a taste of the kingdom. And so, even healing, I mean, if, if you get healed today, if, if, one day you will die. One day you will grow old and pains will come, aches and pain, and you will die. That's the nature of the world. But throughout the years, Time that God is in us, you will taste a bit of the kingdom in your life. And that was what the miracles did. Gave a taste of what the kingdom is like. Because the kingdom will be will have no cancer, no sickness, no blindness, no, 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 no deafness, and no death. And so today we can get a glimpse of that in healing. Jesus showed us by, by healing others. But all of those were just tastes of what the kingdom is like. The second, the kingdom, uh, the miracles of Jesus are to demonstrate something about the miracle worker himself. You see, it is to teach us that this man is no ordinary man. He is, in fact, the good news that we need, the embodiment of good news. He's a God man. He's a perfect model of manhood, of humanity. He does miracles to demonstrate his power over nature and his power over super nature. He is the all powerful God. And so the miracles are a demonstration of his quality of his character, of his nature. He is Jesus, the Son of God, the, the one prophesied to come into the world. But thirdly, the miracles of Jesus are a physical sign of the spiritual reality. And this is the bit that I want to pull out this morning. For every miracle that Jesus did, he was teaching us a spiritual truth about our lives and the brokenness of our lives. When he healed someone of leprosy, he was teaching us that he alone can cleanse the sinful nature. Leprosy in the scripture was symbolic of sin. And so when Jesus, uh, I mean, leprosy permeates the, the body and so on, it's like sin permeating the soul and making the sinner spiritually unclean, because a person who had leprosy was unclean spiritually, socially, and so on. They were ostracized from the community. So the leper became a symbol of sin. The person who is really with sin, and Jesus claims that person. When he raised someone from the dead, he was teaching us that we are spiritually dead without him, and he alone can give us life. You see, so there is a spiritual element to all the miracles. When, when, he, when he opened the blind eyes, he's saying that we are spiritually blind, and we need him to make us see. When he unstopped deaf ears, he's saying that we are spiritually deaf, and only he can open our ears to hear. The small apostles, Jesus opened the blind eyes and, and deaf ears, and, and, and of course he's, he's done this many times. 
throughout the gospel, especially the blind is the most common one that he did. So the miracle, therefore, is a physical demonstration of deeper spiritual reality that we are in. The world is full of blind Bartimaeuses. In fact, before our eyes were open, we were all Bartimaeuses. You see, Bartimaeus was blind. And he heard Jesus was passing by, and somehow he knew that Jesus had the power to cure his blindness. So he cried out to him, Jesus, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. First thing to note is that he cried out for help. Someone who was in need will cry out for help. Bartimaeus was blind and he wanted to have his sight restored. He was so comfortable in his blindness. He cried out to Jesus and he would not allow anyone to silence him. He had a need and he knew Jesus can help him and so he called out. He knew that Jesus was the answer to his problem. So he called out to Jesus. You know, we are told in Acts 2 that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What it takes to be saved, therefore, is simply calling out to Jesus. Lord, save me is a cry of a desperate person who needs the intervention of Jesus in their lives. Of course, you won't call out to Jesus unless you realize your need of him. Oh, 
people in this world have. And that is the, that is the cry, that's the answer that I want to see. The testimony of the believer is, I was once blind, but now I see. Maybe you can testify to that. But there are plenty of people in our world who are blind and cannot see. Everyone, everyone in this world is born spiritually blind. There are plenty of people walking around today, groping in the darkness of this world because they are blind. The difference between them and blind Bartimaeus is that he knew he was blind. And he also knew that Jesus had the answer to his blindness. The vast majority of people who are blind today don't recognize their blindness. They think they can see when in fact they are blind. And because they do not know they are blind, they do not acknowledge that Jesus is the solution to their blindness. Jesus is the good news. To be blind, sisters and brothers, is to live without Christ in your life. To be blind is to live your life in the darkness of this sinful world and your own sinful heart without realizing that your own heart is leading you towards a precipice of eternity. And at any moment now, you may fall over and you will die eternally. Because, because you are blind, you cannot see the way. And you are heading into an eternal ditch that the Bible calls hell. You see, the majority of people you meet are on that road. Jesus calls it the broad road that leads to destruction. And many find it. The narrow road that leads to life, only a few find it. When Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, his spiritual blindness was manifested in three days of physical blindness. You see, Paul's encounter with the risen Lord Jesus Christ revealed in his own his own blindness of heart. And that blindness that he had in his heart was demonstrated in the blindness he suffered for three days. It took Ananias to come and pray for him to receive his sight, the physical sight. Because the, the symbolism is that as Paul received his physical sight, in the same way he was given spiritual sight. And so that from that moment, his life was changed forever. All of us, all of us are on the road to somewhere. Either we are sitting on the road begging, like Bartimaeus, or we are on a journey. A hostile journey, maybe. A hateful journey, like Paul. But we are all on a journey. And on that journey, only an encounter with Jesus can transform our lives. Only Jesus can open the blindness of our hearts. So if you want to see, call out to him, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord, I want to see. I desire to see. I want to be taken out of the darkness in my life and into the light of your kingdom. Lord, open my eyes. That I may see. Anyone who calls to the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the promise of the gospel. You see, whatever it is you are going through today, only Jesus can help. Jesus is the Savior, the deliverer, the rescuer. He came to seek and to save the lost. We are the lost, we are the broken, we are the blind. And Jesus not only can save us, but He's willing. If we but call out to him, Lord, save me. You see, we live in a world, sisters and brothers, where people are comfortable in their blindness. And they will not come to the only one who can give them sight. So come to Jesus. He alone can save you. Bring him. 
the brokenness of your life, bring in the sinfulness of your heart. He will forgive, he will rescue you from the eternal precipice towards which you are heading without God and without Christ in your life. Come to Jesus, because he alone has the good news of eternal life. Come to Jesus, because he alone can open the blind eyes to give clarity so that we can see clearly the path to eternal life. He and he alone have the way, the power to lead us to life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for opening our blind eyes. Thank you for mending our brokenness. Thank you for giving our sins. Thank you for restoring us life. Thank you for rescuing us from the precipice of eternal death. And so Lord, we pray. We pray for those who are still blind. Those in our families. Those in our community. Those in our country. Those in the world who are still groping in the dark. Some, some very comfortable with their blindness. Lord, we pray that they will be Bartimaeus crying out, Lord, I want to see. Have mercy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to say, let's stand and say, it is just as I am without your faith. With the chorus, I'll, I'll come broken to the memory and so on. Yes.
become broken, become guilty, become sick, become lost, but we come because you alone have the words of eternal life. Does the Lord bring your healing upon those who are sick today? Bring your forgiveness upon those who are guilty. Bring wholeness to all of our broken lives. Bring wholeness to our broken world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we sing that last verse again? Just as I am, I will be lost.
them financial management of the whole population. He paid on to those suffering poverty as a result of inflation, the cost of energy and mortgage interest rates. And he paid for those many the food banks. And he did pay for people who perhaps for the first time had to resort to the food banks. Lord Peace said to him, as perhaps this is something that they, they don't know to their life that they would have to do. Help them, Lord. Please give them the strength that they need to accept the, the, the food from the food banks, Lord. And he prayed for wisdom for King Charles. And also for a wise and humane immigration policy. And he intercedes for those who are affected by people going on strike doctors, the, the nurses, and train drivers. He prayed for wise and speedy agreements with the government. Lord, in your mercy. He prayed for London and Alcala and Hill. He prayed for City, Car, Almea and London, and Monsama, Piaz, Almea and Hill. He prayed to give them, we ask you, Lord, to give them wisdom in their decisions that they make to help people affected by poverty. And he prayed for faith in schools. He thanked you for the valuable help that, that they do in our schools as they work among young children and they are made of their life through God. And we pray that you will provide them with the funds that they urgently need to keep going. And Lord, we also pray for Cornelius as he goes and chaplain to St. James's school. He paid the youth for Christ. Let there be encouragement in faith to many young people and help them to reach out to young people in the community. Lord, in your mercy. He paid for sin. He paid for those suffering from cancer in our own congregation, for those suffering in their health. For those struggling in painful arthritis and for those struggling in having great health. And Lord, also we pray for those on our prayers. We pray also for what now recovering from surgery on his eye. And we pray for Grace as she is now with her family in Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the bereaved. We think especially of family family and the Hannah Todd family and other members of our own congregation mourning the death of their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. In your and Lord, we pray for the people around us who don't know you. We pray for our family members, neighbours and work colleagues, and people we encounter every day, that you will touch their heart and draw them to you. Please use us as a tool that we can share with them about you, and give us your wisdom and move with your Holy Spirit in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to thank you, Jean. Let's stand as we share peace with one another. And of course, if you have an offering, please put it in the offering plate to have a back, or you can use uh, our contact rest um, machine that's also there. 
Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in his name, and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace is with you. Peace, sir. <laughs> peace. Peace of the world, peace of them. Peace, peace, good to see you guys. Alright, and uh, as I said, the offering is at the back if you have a problem. You can have a seat for a moment while you receive it. Um, if you could say in uh,
you spread a ten wing for us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord and all God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embrace us as your children and welcome us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you share our life that we might live in him and he in us. You always us of the blood upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this to the remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup, the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim that his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son as we eat and drink his holiness and make us one in Christ for the risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift your voice to join with the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence the prayer of Savior Jesus told us. Our Father in heaven, and hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Draw near of faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
It's where you're not that it's quite bad. But, um, um, as you have heard, uh, I should have heard by now, Sister Hannah, uh, Hannah Todd has departed this life to be with our Lord in heaven. And so we give thanks to God for her life and for her translation, as it were, translating from this life into the next transition. And, um, and of course, we pray for the family as they prepare to say goodbye to our sister, our sister Hannah. Um, the family is having a nine-night reflection on her life on Tuesday evening at the house from 6.30. Um, I, I'm told that uh, I can invite the, the church to come along for those who are, who are able to uh, on Tuesday evening. The date of the funeral is not yet set, so uh, you know, watch the space as we say for more information to come to follow. So do pray for um, the family, of course, our brother and their time, um, of course, and the rest of the family as they prepare for their funeral service. A um, few other things. Uh, this evening at St. John's Church, there is their, uh, they, they do this thing called Hot Topics, and this evening is Why is there evil and suffering in the world? If you are, if that's something that's interesting, do go along. They, they only have them once a month, and it's this evening at 5 o'clock. Um, I put there, if you need, do you need writing your, help writing your will or your power of attorney? Now, on the 23rd of July, we are having um, Giles J Jackson, somebody I met through Ambrose, and he will be coming here to talk to us about will writing and powers of attorney, and why that is very important for us, um, especially with the owner. I, I got older um, this week, so I have to start thinking about that as well. But, you know, he told me it's not for, it's for everybody, of course, we need to start writing our will. From as early as we possibly can, because as we know, you know, it's kind of our age, you know, we can pass at any time. So, so do come up, do tell somebody, tell somebody about that, uh, and uh, anybody who's interested in will writing and power of attorney. Um, he's very knowledgeable, but he's a really good speaker as well. Um, he, he will only be doing about 10 to 15 minutes, so, he, 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 so don't worry, it's not going to be the whole service talking about will writing. But he's pretty good. Um, so, all right. Um, other than that, the rest of the notices. Um, I don't see any visitors this morning. No, I don't see any visitors. It's great to see you guys braving the heat. You know, sometimes you bring the weather, the, the cold, and the rain, and you bring the heat to the air. So it's great to see. You. Um, as you know, I was away this week um, at in, in Amsterdam. It's an amazing, amazing conference. Uh, some of you probably uh, through through Catherine. Catherine is um, is like a right to She you know she she lands and pushes you and says, "Come on, come on, people, come on!" And uh, she she got some of you to watch the um, to the, the 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 online version. It, it was much better in person, just to say. Um, but it was great. She she wished she was there. Um, uh, she contacted me contact me and sending me emails and texts to, to talk to me about it and so on. She was very much watching it most of the most of the evenings and days. It, it's a, I have put some books at the back. Um, as I said last week when I talked about it, it was something that, that came up for me because I wasn't planning on going. It. it just so happened that I ended up going because somebody was able to pay my way, <laughs> pay for the conference and and so on, and for me to go and, and experience it, and it was an amazing experience. The, 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 con the concept of the conference is called uh, about evangelism. And the idea is every one of us are called to, to reach a, 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 one, at least one person in our lives for the gospel of Christ. It's, it's a launch of a decade of evangelism. And, and the, the, the significance of that decade is that in 2033, this is 2023, 10 years from now, in 2033, the church will be celebrating the 2000th anniversary of the birth, of the death and resurrection of Christ and the birth of the church. Uh, it was around 8033. 
free that Christ who was raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, and the Holy Spirit came on the first day of Pentecost. So in ten years from now, that will be two thousand years. And the, the the challenge, the challenge, because on that day of Pentecost, the church was born, and uh, and people went out, the disciples went out and proclaimed the gospel all over Asia and Africa. As I said, the rest of history today, the church is over two billion, two plus billion people in the world and growing. And the challenge is that there are places and people who still have not heard the gospel of Jesus, despite that. And so the challenge for us is to find someone, to tell someone. In the book I put on the back, uh, it's a great little book. I, I, have, I only have about three or four copies. Uh, if you want it, just take it, read it, bring it back, and, and somebody else can take it. But it has some bits, some lots of good stuff in there about how we can pray and proclaim the gospel um, to people in our community, in our circle, and frankly in the world. The challenge is to find at least one person, but five people that we can pray for and share the gospel with for the next ten years. At least five. Commit to those five for 10 years until they turn to four, at least. Now, do you have the second to you? Do you have the, the, the without giving up, you say, Lord, I'm praying for this person until they turn to four or until they die, whichever God first. <laughs> you know, and that's, <laughs> yeah, literally, and that is a challenge. So, as I said, there's a book there um, called, um, some of what I was called, but anyway, it's a, and it says, know their name. Know their name. The first thing to know is the name. And put that name on a list. Put that name in my heart. And pray for that person. We've done a few over the last week. Uh, we've met lots of people in Amsterdam. We walk about Amsterdam. Meeting people. Talking to people. Oh, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Talking to people on the subway. About Jesus. Yes. Absolutely amazing. So, you get names, you talk to people, and you pray with them. Pray for people on the subway. Pray for people on the street, which we did in Amsterdam. And Saturday, yesterday, when I wasn't there, they spent the whole day going out. And, and we only did a few, a few hours when I was there. But it's a challenge for us, sisters and brothers. And we need to tell people, we have good news. We have good news that people need to hear, and we need to share that good news. Amen. Let's, we are going to sing our final. Uh, is there any birthdays? Are there any birthdays? I, 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 I know mine was in the past, but we did that on Friday, but we, we did that last week. But any of this week coming? No, no birthdays this week. All right, it's fine. Any wedding anniversaries? No wedding anniversaries this week. All right, that's it. Let's stand and sing. The last, our final song, the great old heart. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, Matthew's birthday on Saturday. Well, yeah, so we, Saturday, yesterday, Saturday. So today, coming. Of course, it's another birthday. Yes, so we're going to let's first we say happy birthday to Matthew. Happy birthday to Jesus said.